Bro, I was filthy on those. <laughs> I thought I was on on those Melbourne bets, eh? Did you, when I sent those through, did you think any of them were going to come through? I just know how hard it is to get them. Like, the fact when I when I've, like, what I was doing before where I was making mistakes is you see so much value and you go, oh, this can hit, this can hit. I've just simplified it now. I find, like, in particular, two try scores or two, like, bets that I really love, whether it might be overs, whether it's try scores, and I just put a little bit on them because then I'm not, like overly invested like yeah, you know what I mean? yeah once you put like heaps of bets on you start going <laughs> screaming Fuck, i was getting angry hey eh, i was getting angry at the present yeah, that yeah that's what i mean you don't want to be hating on your boys so but i've been talking to uh, jack i've been talking to scope for a little bit about like i was like fuck i'm just gonna whack a grand or two grand on something like soon and i was looking at the dollar 20 favors because if you look at the stock market you get 20 percent return you'd be heaps stoked but whenever it's around betting bro it just changes eh? Yeah. Like, dollar 20 looks so rank it looks rank <laughs> but if you put a thousand bucks you get 200 on but if you put 50 bucks and got two Hundred back, yeah. that'll be okay. I, to, I told him about the the better from that's on Bleacher Report with um, the Left Go Show, yeah. and he doesn't watch any of the games because then he becomes so emotional towards. So he puts his bets on based on data and numbers, but watch. then he doesn't watch the games. Because, that makes sense to me. That makes just say if you've got a line right and there's a fucking pick six in the last or a fumble recovery that makes you lose the bet, it puts you on tilt. And therefore, you go, all right, fuck, now I've got to get the next game. Chase my odds. Yeah. Chase my odds. Yeah, all power coming out. Like, I was like, first set, I'm like, oh, no. Mm. <laughs> and all my, all my bets had 13 plus in them as well to get a bit more value. All right, let's go. Hey, guys, what's up? Welcome back to the YKTR Sports Show. Joined, as always, by my good guy, Skipper Scope. What's up, baby? Scopeful, grateful. Had a good weekend. Running good times at the moment, too? He's a nice click, eh? You seen that? <laughs> you know, you're pulling the old groin injury because... Uh, you really stepped it up when I was in, um, had the old COVID, eh? Kick yeah. a bloke while he's down. Well, I'm telling you, like, I, when I heard the pent and breathing coming down the, the Bondi Road that time, <laughs> that was a real wake-up call to me. And uh, it just happens to be that, you know, you went in a two-week lockdown, so I took advantage of that. You're right. Hey, Jacko, this one's the battery. Is that going to be sweet? Oh, yeah, I'll double it. I can plug it back in. Carry on. I think it's got two bars. Yeah, two, three bars. That's all right. Yeah, plenty. All right, guys. As always, this content is brought to you by BSC, the number one supplement company in the world, in the comp. I had a cookies and cream. Have you had the protein bars, the cookies and cream one? The BSC, yeah, probably, yeah. I've yeah. treated myself to all of them. <laughs> I, was in the, I was in the petrol station the other day and I was like, yeah, they support us. I'll support them back. Yeah. When you go grab one, fuck, it was nice. Yeah, I've got the peanut butter ones. I always smash the, the peanut butter ones. Do you know who smashes them, Caleb, bro? <laughs> <laughs> he just comes through and smacks all those cookies and just eats them willy-nilly, the cunt. There's, There's the old g- Lukey 2PM special. The yeah, cookies. Lukey 2PM, straight <laughs> up in, in the cupboard, digging into the BSC. It's not, a bad, it's not a bad little snack to have anyway. Like if little you, Caliville if mutters. Them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Having little, semi beef in at the moment, bit yeah, of a giggle. Little virgin mutters. But the, f- the funny thing about Lukey, like, He's not super witty with the verbal comes backs, but he's... Memes are doom. Memes are doom. He's quick on photo. He, he's funny via Photoshop. Yeah. <laughs> and Simi's trying to play him at his own game too, and it's not working. Like, yeah. Because Simi's better at like, quick responses. You, when you watch Simi too in the comments, you can you can sometimes, because like, if, if you get after him, sometimes I go and see if he's read it too. Yeah. And then he, you can see he'll take his time, come back five minutes later and pretend like he's just seen it and come with a reply. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Yeah, still anti semi round here <laughs> at the moment. All right, Jacko, let's roll into the football. Actually, the weirdest fucking round of football I've seen in a long, long time. Obviously, we're going to be talking about a lot of these scenarios. Nathan Cleary was dropping balls. All the gun sides were almost about to lose. It was a, just a weird round of football, wasn't it? Yeah. Is it just that we're just trying to get we're just trying to get to the finals, aren't we? Yeah, I think a, a lot of the the teams now, like they played against teams that probably weren't going to be there in the majority of the time, except for the Storm and um, Parramatta Eels. South and, and Roosters, like in terms of teams that are going to matter, like I think obviously the top four in particular were just trying just, to get through. A eh? just looked hesitant, mm. like in a lot in, in a lot of the things that they did. Um, you, you mentioned I think Nath dropped the ball like two or three times, but he, he made some out on the full as well. Yeah, put one out on the full, made up with it with his kicks on the line, hitting the pads like elite. That's just elite kicking what he did there. But oh, can't you do that? <laughs> What about because I don't, even still I was um, I was watching it on nine still I was like oh do you reckon he meant to do that and then Lockie come in and goes fucking know if he did because he put it on the the side of the, the yeah. foot and bent it in and you can see the natural curve that happened on it and especially how much force he was whacking behind it like yeah. if that skips the post like it's probably going to bend a little bit but he was hitting them pretty hard man I yeah. know they can sort of bend and go and stuff like that but he, uh, he's yeah because if he doesn't that. hit the post they're going dead mm. like so that's yeah you're right and with Manly Manly looked. 
I sent a I sent a video of uh, on the in the manly um, Instagram after Turbo scored three tries. He looked filthy after the game. Mm. You could tell like he had a shocker to be for for him. <laughs> he had a shocker, <laughs> and this is this like oh, I'm with you on this. He didn't have the best game. He still ran 180 meters. Had like two or three line breaks and three yeah, tries. Man, that's but a that's it, a 50 meters for a normal. That's fullback. kiddies for him. Yeah, like that's agree. honestly kiddies for him at this point. And. Um, I'm not 100% because I was just looking at like I'm watching a few things and, and this is just what I sort of what I seen but he looked like they were singing the team song after and he sort of just floated about looked like he was a bit pissed off and, and I reckon it was because <clears throat> he was a little bit frustrated with not only um, probably his own performance even though it was fucking still better than anyone's in the league mm-hmm. but just the overall the team they looked a bit hesitant and got into the shit um, and then you know even, even Panthers looked a bit scrappy early on and they were able to kick away. Tigers come back. Like, you know, if they're, when they're at their prime, they're not even getting close to those two teams. I'm hot on the Panthers at the moment. So am I. <laughs> they've, completely, <laughs> they've completely won me back. Fuck, we can change fucking... We don't mind changing around here. We're, we're not... A week's a long time in rugby league and probably a month's a bit longer. Very, very long time. So, man, I like the boys in pink. I think Tavita Pangai Jr. in that pink jersey looks... Bro, they just look so much bigger and stronger than everyone at the moment. But this is where we... So, so even though... Even though, just say we had a take and we're wrong. This is where we've got to dif- differentiate ourselves from like other shows or like you say we watch the herd and shit. Hey, eh, Jacko, they just we're, stick to it. They eh? stick to it and they and they go nah. Like and and whatever their point was twelve months ago, they just never give up on it and they find excuses. If Latrell was still in this team, I'd back the Panthers over Souths now. And I probably over the last three four weeks, I'd probably would have gone the other way after watching the last weekend's games. I'll. I'll I'd go Penrith, especially with Nathan there. Yeah, I was I was on the fence still. Like I was still I had hope for South because I started to, <laughs> because I started picking them. I still wanted to give them a chance, but um, that going into this week, you probably most people would have had Melbourne and Penrith, and then I think now the only the team the only other team that can can worry him is Manly. Manly, Manly. Yeah, you don't want to be playing Manly round one. All right, Jacko. Sorry, bro. You're the host. Let's that's get a, into this. No, that's all good. You guys pretty much touched on all the topics anyway. Um, <laughs> Just like to say that I have been on Penrith since the start, Scott. Just quietly. You you did waver as well. I did. <laughs> Is that probably your only good take you've had all year? <laughs> uh-huh. I've been on from the start. Warriors and Panthers, baby. Um, all right. The Eels obviously upset the competition heavyweights. You touched on ice from the start. Um, I suppose the main subject coming out of this one is it a big deal or no big deal whether that's for Melbourne or Pen- or Para I don't really know but deal or no big deal Para upsetting Manly uh, Melbourne rather um, I think it's kind of a big deal for Manly or oh, for Melbourne so if you look at the two teams that we're sort of hot on right now Penrith they've kind of just floated through the season injuries now everyone's coming back at the same time and they're on the exact same points as Melbourne which is fucking trippy to me and where Melbourne have won 19 games in a row over the past month <coughs> they started to go downhill a little bit man they're starting to feel it's starting to look a little bit shaky. Few suspensions. Uh, Josh Addo car injury is like a pretty big one as well. Yeah. Um, they're kind of, I want to say, it's hard to say that they're limping into the finals, but how they play this next week is going to be really important. Do they rest everyone and, and give everyone a, a freshen up? Or do they throw everyone back in and say, we, we need to get um, this form rolling back on? So it, I think it's kind of a big deal for Melbourne Storm, if you ask me. In terms of Parramatta, my personal opinion, I feel like they've, they've peaked... Like they'll, they'll, I don't reckon they're going to play better than that over the next three to four weeks. I still think they'll go out in straight sets over the finals. Um, but it was, it was great to see that Parramatta performance where Scope touched on it earlier in the year. When things start to get tough, all the forwards start to seem, pass, seem to be passing. That wasn't the case this weekend. Mm. They were just going bang, 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 bang. And the thing about Parramatta, the two most influential players, uh, Mitchell Moses, when I seen him running out, he looked up for it. He was sort of doing the... Like all that sort of shit. And yeah. Nathan Brown, bro. John, Junior Paul is the best forward in there. He does his thing. I think Gufferson's still their best player by country mile. He always turns up. But if Mitch Moses is there and Nathan Brown leads the pack, man, they're a completely different side. Yeah, so yeah, so many good points there. Uh, one guy I want to really highlight who did a, one of the better jobs that I've seen anyone doing, just, Justin Ollum, is uh, Will P- Penasini. Yeah, he did. He's he nice. is fucking nice, bro. Like, it's, it's, Ollum was off, though. Olin was off. Olin was off, but that's not his fault, is it? That's yeah, yeah exactly. He he's got to take advantage of it. He defended him really well. Um, you know, they put a lot of pressure on that edge. They were looking to attack Fergo because he's playing on the right edge with Fergo and, and Mitch Moses. And I thought he really stood up. And and they weren't like try saving tackles or whatever. They were just nice defensive clean tackles. And you've seen that like it sort of threw Olin off like early into the game where I reckon he got a head knock, bro. Yeah, there there must have been something there because. Um, he just got up and played the ball. Really great performance 
by uh, Junior Paulo. I think you're right. Junior Paulo and Nathan Brown led the way. Bryce Cartwright was mm, a really – n- I know he's our boy, so we always stick up for him. I thought when he come on, there was a real point of difference with – you know how they – I think Matty Johns has always spoken about it before. And, no, Joey speaks about it. Like the teams that do really well against Melbourne has been the Warriors in the past because mm. they've got a nice little offload. They probably throw balls that they shouldn't throw. So to my to your point about playing direct, he's the guy I want to see playing with the ball, Bryce Cartwright, because he's got that skill. Like he's got like we, – we talk often about – Players having certain roles within their team, and you'd like to see certain players just, you know, when it's when it was Cowboys going through that mad mad era, Tom Lolo's ripping it in, getting to a point. He's not trying to offload. He's not trying to preline or any of this stuff. The Parramatta f- uh, starting pack set the game up perfectly, mm. and then by the time Bryce come on, they were gassed. Like there was holes presenting themselves all over the spot, and it was just it wasn't even an offload. It wasn't even. Um, um, anything too crazy Brycey just did some nice quick hands like mm, he's got nice, that he's nice got little that. catch and pass that got onto the outside um, that created some holes and then they were able to play in the back for it so I also agree with you in the fact that I as well as Parramatta played I don't still don't think they're serious contender I don't think they're going to knock off the top four and they got Panthers yeah four teams four teams I still don't yeah. think they beat Rabbitohs in a do or, do, do or die. Yeah, so um, so they, they've ramped up for this game. They've got up for it. Um, they've got the Panthers this week as well, and then they're yeah. going to have to get up for another one. So realistically, if they're going to go all the way to the GF, they've got, they've got a big seven weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Six and, weeks, bro. And I just I, I reckon the other teams are just, despite them beating Melbourne uh, twice, I reckon Melbourne didn't respect them again. And, this, and I don't reckon they respected them at the start of the year. Like The thing that, that – going to the Melbourne side of it now – there was it was like scrappy against the Titans. It was scrappy against the Raiders. They won seventeen in a row. Or eighteen. How much did they 19, win? Or nineteen 19. in a row. That shit is hard, man. Like people don't like realize how hard it is to win a game of NRL. You know when you win it's, three in a row, you're like, "Fuck, we're on here, boys. We're and, on. They've and, done that." And when every team is playing you like it's a grand final because they don't want to be the one on the end of that fucking on the back end of that. So, like you said. Full credit to Para because they come out and they fired and they got into them and didn't just go, oh, fuck it, let's let them win the fucking, like, break the record on us and mm. they went after them. But, um, Do you know what I think it is, bro? A bit of a blessing in disguise for Mel. I'd rather could, lose now. Yeah, and then, like, there were th- there were moments where, you know, Melbourne chanced their arm and throw, their ball, throw the ball around and that, but there were a couple of opportunities where they shifted and then even All like the balls just like out the back and stuff. Hey, the timing like was clunky, off. Bro. And then normally in a normal game, from for me, like when it matters, it might be shift, shift, and there was so much room to just put a nice little kick in behind and mm. force a repeat set. And they'll throw on um, you know, Prez threw a ball, I think, and was trying to throw a cutout over the top to Josh Adokar, which Fergo it must have been something that they looked at in video, right? Because mm. they went at it a couple of times. And obviously Fergie Ferg's had his problems in defence on the mm. right edge. So they must have seen something that they liked. But when it wasn't working, they weren't able to pull that game plan and go to plan B, which they're normally really good at. Like, all right, Fergie's not fucking falling for this this um, this game. Let's roll a kick in behind him and build pressure that way. And, um, yeah, they caught on the last, like, four times. Yeah, I think. yeah that's what just, I mean. It was just very un Melbourne like that was like kind of the weird thing to watch about it as well so yeah, yeah pretty confusing but really important week coming up for Melbourne I th- they rest they rest people away eh? as, as much do. as breaking a record would have been nice like who knew about the 1975 Roosters before like no one like who who won the comp in two thousand and five Tigers? Like, oh, 1975 Roosters might have remembered it. <laughs> yeah, but no one else. Like, yeah, would you rather do that or win a comp? Yeah, win a comp and. Who who said it? Cheese said it a couple of weeks ago. Cheese said it after Cheese, the game. They've talked. <laughs> they've talked about it um, already at Melbourne Storm. Yeah, they don't, I think they brought up the Golden State Warriors winning all those games and breaking the record mm. for that was the the analogy. That's mad. Yeah, you know, that's you'd cool. love that. That's cool. And they said they didn't win the the championship that year. And then I think Bellamy said the same thing to him. Yeah, the wins are nice, but we're trying to build and try to win a, a championship and not. Blessing in disguise for Melbourne. Um, great, great performance by Parramatta. Can't deny that. But yeah, let's roll. Just before we move off Melbourne, can I just I want to throw something else at you? Because I thought of it then. Scope, when you were talking, um, Mitchell Moses actually said after the game, he said, because um, they kind of completed those early sets. They didn't really get on the bo- a board early, Para. Yep. But he said, we knew that if we stuck to it, we were the fitter side and would get them at the back end. And they did look rooted, Melbourne. Is that a concern rolling forward at all? or No, everyone's fit, right? You're fit in round 24. Everyone's fit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
Yeah, Mitch is just trying to be like confident about like his performance and the way that they played. But yeah. he is right. Like you do the well, right the things. Boy. It's 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 an, it's not a, it's not anything new. You complete well, and I, I believe they did in the first half. And then Melbourne You'll had a couple of We'll get him in the back end. Yeah. That's that's yeah. everyone. That's yeah. everyone. If you defend too much and make errors, you're gonna get tired towards the back end of the game. And so. Ice, what about the obviously the other topic coming out of it is the Peppy Hines, Brandon, Harry. Is there a, a flow that you think works best for that? Like the one that won nineteen games in a row for me. And I like and Pappenhausen. You got to pick your poison. So Pappenhausen can break a game open, but I think Nico Hines is better in shape and structure. So there's times where he looks good out the back of Jerome and looks good out the back of um, Nico Hines and oh sorry and uh, Munster. Munster. But Nico Hines can also play first receiver on the ball as well, where Pappenhausen is always a little bit wider, so he needs the other people to create for them. But then like Pappenhausen can break open a game. So yeah. it's it's a tough one because they're both wonderfully talented and it's a good problem to have. Um, the hookers you'd be starting cheese. I'd, I'd, sta- I'd start cheese for now, especially if the, I think Dale Fanukin. I think he's he's back this week. Oh, yeah. this is another Bro. point. So I thought about this before. Big point of difference for someone that's been out for uh, the last four week four weeks. Now it's myself for Solomona. They're both. I reckon Nelly from Welly. I reckon they're really missing him, eh? I reckon like who the six foot six guy coming off the bench. That's what yeah, I mean. You and didn't it, miss him, and it really hasn't been spoken about. Like I was, I was trying to think of the games. I was like. Yeah, their, their pack's still doing their thing, and I'm like, I'm not overacting on one loss, but I was like, there's something missing, and, mm. and it wasn't like we've like sort of mentioned it before. He's that difference maker in the pack for him. Like he skittles like two or three people, and then then you see cheese like cheese might duck over from dummy half, or Harry might get out and make a twenty meter break from from halfway, and you go, yeah. geez, that looked easy for cheese. Oh, beauty, big Nelson's fucking playing the ball while three people are still on the ground. Like, And you can tell some of the boys are short of a run. Um, yep. Say, like, Kamakamitha. Yep. So, Tommy Eisenhuth as well. Like, he's just going to do a job for you. Yeah. Like, these those t- Melbourne, they, they've got plenty of people that can do their job, but then also have X Factor on top of that as yeah. well. And and Nelly from Welly, Nelson, um, Darcy's next opponent. <laughs> <laughs> he's 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 the guy for them. He's a really important piece of their puzzle because they've got a nice balance of Christian Welsh and Jesse Bromwich who are going to yep. absorb impact and get you go forward and, and do what they do because they, they're vets and they, yep. that's what they do. But then you need that punch as well from somewhere, and he's he's the guy. Is he back this week too? Uh, they've got Nels and Dale Finucane back this week. I Dale Finucane's like. You yeah. know, well, everyone will say like half the NRL comp wants him. And we were sort of talking about it, me and Jacko. And then we've seen a stat that he's pretty much made every major semi since 2012. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, or, or won a comp. And yeah, you don't, he, you don't that, he started in that good Bulldogs period from 12 to 14, didn't he? And then he went over to the Melbourne has been there ever since. Mm. And what, what, what vet players say in, in crucial times, I think is really important. Yeah. Like, obviously, Prez is going to be having his say in there, but <laughs> who knows what Prez is tossing up. Jesse Bromwich is a nice, cool, cool calm character. Maybe Fanukin's that little glue that keeps everyone else together as well, that links the middle and the backs as well. So, yeah, um, yeah I don't... I don't think we look back on round 24 and go, fuck, that was the defining moment of the season. But uh, it's still good to watch. Yeah. Shout out Parramatta, doing yeah. good things. Potential defining moment of the season was Latrell Shot and Joey Manu. Obviously, has ended both of their <laughs> seasons. So, I right, so we'll start with you on that. Obviously, we'll get your thoughts on the tackle and kind of the aftermath first um, and then roll into whether or not Latrell, because he's, he's gone now, does that put a line through Souths? GF hopes. Uh, answer that last question. Yes, um, you can't win the comp. They are backed up and outside backs. Like mm. Braden Burns can come in. Depending, depending how they go, do they throw Joey um, Benji got, at six? Yeah, they've got Brandon uh, Burns, Tane Milne, and Tao Tao Moga all fit. Oh, in cool. terms of outside backs, oh, I think they're looking right. at that um, the the Taffy kid who comes on and plays halves for oh. Reynolds. When oh, you're um, right, he played. Uh, I think when Latrell was playing Origin, he played fullback for him against Newcastle for memory yeah. in that game. So. I think um, he's been considered as an option as well. Um, yeah, two parts of this conversation. I think it was just a little bit unlucky. Um, like, I think Robbo summed it up best. If you combine me and Scope's knowledge about rugby league, Robbo would be two times smarter than us, and he's actually coached these blokes as well. And he summed it up very, very well. He goes, Latrell loves to play the game on the edge, and that's what makes him great. And there's, like, the other side of this as well, and um, I'm going to go in for Joey here. And you could see he was emotional and upset. Like, mm. you've seen a fully grown man. And like, when you grow up, and you'd probably get, like, when you grow up in those, as an Islander, and, like, you know, when you're tight with your boys and stuff like that, you don't really do this type of thing. And the other side of the conversation is, fuck it, it's South versus um, um, Roosters. They should be trying to take each other's heads off and whatever like that. But when I, like, I can't speak on behalf of Joey, but I can speak on behalf of the way that we've sort of grown up because we grew up in the same town. We're like, but once you've got your boys, that's it. Like, you're tight. 
Like if you get if you get into a fight, you're all getting into a fight. If you've got a pie, you've only got half a pie. You know what I mean? Mm. You, you, you you sort of go into that sort of mentality. So Save he, us a bite, G. Because <laughs> it's sip, G. No lips. And then um and then like he he would have come over here. Him and Latrell would have been boys. I I know for a fact when Joey's family comes over, they would have been feeding Latrell and vice versa. Yep. So there's like that. You once you're tight, you're tight, and that's it. You're law for life. And that's why I think he was upset and frustrated because even though the, you got your two of your best outside backs trying to compete, you can compete without trying to do that stuff. And there's a lot of Aussie guys that are listening to this, like, who gives a fuck? Like, but that's just the difference in mentalities I think they have. So it was really sad to see. I'm sort of glad that Joey sort of bounced back. I'm um, watching him blow his nose. I've seen that happen a few times. Yeah, that's that's right. very that's common. I've yeah. never seen that, bro. That was crazy for me. That's oh, so I've common. Seen that. So once I've seen people do it in the sheds after the game, so they haven't realised and they got back and they're like, oh, because people have been able to play through those injuries. And then, like, they've got in and then they've, they've been in the shower and just gone boom. I've seen them do it in, like, UFC and boxing. It's happened before. Like, that's why they say never blow it, your nose. Yeah, yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. Don't, like, because you, you'll have, it feels like you've got a snotty nose and they're yeah. like, don't blow it, don't blow it. And then he would just gone boof and puffs up. Yeah. So, like, there's two parts of that. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, Latrell plays the way that he plays. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. He plays with a chip on his shoulder, man. Those two have gone at each other. You remember at international level? When like, Joey Palmed them? Yeah, they, that? Used to, like, they, they had awesome battles there as well. But there's two sides, like, they say, no, he's just competitive. So a lot of people see competitive and see a grub like Michael Innes, like the way he played, like, oh, that's just him, he's competitive. But then I don't think anyone was more competitive than, than um, Jonathan Thurston. Mm. I mean, he competed at such a high click and, and he was chasing down everything, but he still played within the rules of the game. Yeah, that's a fair point. So um, there's, uh, yeah, I don't think Latrell's going to change. Oh, hopefully, they're, hopefully they're sweet. Oh, I think they will. At the end of the day, it's just a game. Um, Joey Manu's old, old boys come out. Uh, just before, I think Roasty might have put I something know, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you say? He's come out and said just the shit that's been talked about Latrell, they need to back off. And um, so he stuck up for Latrell, cool. saying that you've got to think about him. And um, see, that this is what like close as. when you're close, bro, and yeah. like especially when you're in tight with families and your families <clears> are feeding you. And like Latrell's family would be doing the same for Joey. Yeah. It was just one of those things that happened. And when you add um, it, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars worth of like salaries and pressure and and history of 1908, like the oldest rivalry. Man, sometimes emotions boil over, and that's what happened with Joey. So um, I messaged him straight away, and he's he's sweet. So yeah, you going to you yeah. going to Latrell, eh? Yeah. Oh, not one thing is I'm I'm sad about this as a fan of the NRL. Oh yeah, we're going to miss out on Latrell and Joey Manu in the finals. And as well as Latrell's been going, and you know how much I love Latrell, Joey Manu over the past ten weeks has been like. He's been one of the better players in the comp. It's yeah. just because he's at the Roosters and the Roosters have so many out and they've had sort of scrappy wins. But what he's been able to do this year, for me, like I talked about last week, Robbo having one of his uh, better seasons as a coach. I reckon Joey Manu's performance this year, considering everyone that's been out and what he's – the amount of load that him and Teddy have had on in particular. And multiple positions. And multiple positions. He plays wing, 5'8", centre, fullback. He comes in for carries – in the 10 metre line, like when he played against the Dragons a couple of weeks ago, he come and took a carry underneath the post to try score a try because like he just seen his awareness. He's seen that they were getting loose. He didn't score the try, but he got like fucking mm. nearly got over. Anyway, so we're going to miss out on Joey. I understand where Robbo's coming from with regards to um, Latrell, but he's got to remember he coaches Jared Warrior Hargraves <laughs> and Victor Radley, right? So that's what Wayne Bennett's... <laughs> that was the funniest statement. That, right? that's, that's Wayne Bennett's point, and that is valid for me. Yeah. So, yeah, you can say that Latrell crosses the line and there was a point three or four years ago where these same conversations were happening about Jared. Like, people were going, Jared was get, hitting people high <laughs> and getting sent off. He always hits people in the back, and eh? Given, and giving penalties or, you know, when they run to the line, yeah. you know, the halves run to the line and he hits people late. So you've got a fucking, you've got a couple that do it for your team as well. I love Robbo, you know I love Robbo, um, but that's just the point on that and that's what Wayne Cummins said as well. And same with Victor Radley, like, He's been suspended for fucking half the season this year because he's been <laughs> struggling to adapt to it. But I, that's not saying uh, I'm against them. I love Hargraves the player. I love Radley the player. So therefore, it'd be, I'd be a hypocrite to not say that I love Latrell and the way that he plays. Yeah, I want to see him tone it back a bit. But I reckon Latrell, and this is, this is another part that I love about Latrell, you talk about from Joey Manu's mindset because that's how you grew up. 
I grew up in Western Sydney, right? So that's a little bit different from from Toke. Western Sydney, we go harder against our mates. Mm. Like that's the way, that's the mindset that we have. Do you know what? Indigenous boys always go hard against each they other. Do, bro. Eh? Like, yeah, you yeah. know, like this is the way we were brought up out west. If we if we play, just say we played club footy. I played at Gl- uh, Cambridge Park when I, when I when we played school footy and I was at Westfields. I was trying to kill Junior Moores or like not kill, like trying to get after Junior Moores. And, I didn't do it because I didn't have it in me, right? But, <laughs> but, but, but just the like, intention was there. But the intention was there. I wanted to hurt them so bad. So this is what I love about Latrell, and I don't love the contact and the hit. But he was trying to hurt Joey, and he was trying to hurt Dane Gagai in Origin. Yeah. So he has he has this focus, right? And he and this is this is the mindset, and this is what I love about it. Like he goes even harder. He's not trying to break his fucking cheekbone and that, but he was trying to put some hurt on Joey because he knows Joey is a key he's member. The yeah. He's the Besides best player him. on the team, so he's going after the best players. And he also has no allegiances when it comes to fucking footy. If it's New South Wales versus uh, Queensland. Gags can get fucked. He's all in, eh? Yeah, if I like that. If he, yeah. if he plays for Sydney Roosters and he's on Joey Manu's team, Gags can get fucked again because it's South. <laughs> but if he's playing for South Sydney and Joey Manu's on the Roosters, well, guess what? Joey can get fucked. Yeah, like, that's for the, 80, for 80. For 80. Mm. And then he comes off and he's like good with the boys. I even put the, the meme up, um, just taking the piss of the tweets when we did the origin and uh, it was the when Gags and um, Latrell played together and I did the Spider-Man thing, like pointing at each other mm-hmm. and he loved it and he, like, he, me and him were just having a little conversation about it. So in that sense, I love the way Latrell plays and I, and I don't want him to lose that in the game because like I said, that was a part of like how I liked, used to like to play the game as well. Mm-hmm. Haven't been able to pull it off, I will get back to that, that I, you know, I couldn't <laughs> pull it off like Latrell but um, the hit obviously wasn't great he deserves the time that he's going to get on the sidelines, I believe. So yeah, um, and like he he went to go over. The, he went like obviously he would he would have he would have been on the phone to Joey, I reckon. Like they're like proper boys, um, but even him trying to go into the changing rooms and yeah. Jared sort of blocked them off as yeah. well. So that's an interesting one too. Yeah, so that, that's that's the other interesting part because they're obviously their mates as yeah, well. But really then Jared would have grown up the same as us in New Zealand. Like yeah. once you're boys, you're boys. You don't. Yeah. But then he'll try and do your ACL. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, he yeah. said that to Normie one time, Jared. What? Um, Normie went to kick it, bro, and he got his legs, and he goes, "Ooh, that's an ACL." <laughs> 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 Fucking Normie, See, that's what I mean, bro. Like, you got you to be careful, like you know, with, with that side of it because you. They weren't fucking pulling Latrell up when he was playing for the Roosters either. Like they weren't going, "Oh, he needs to, he needs to pull yeah. that back." Yeah, yeah. So obviously, like it's happened. Um, Joey's fine. He's he's had an operation. Latrell's got a suspension and copped it. Hasn't tried to even ch- challenge it. I think we just leave it at that. And I think that a lot of the time when it comes to Latrell, like he he's one of those guys that that media love to latch on and and, and Payne is the bad guy. So, man, like he plays the game the way he does, and let's just move on and let's just roll into yeah, finals. Yeah, because some of the shit that's been said, like when it comes down deep down with Latrell too, when it goes away from incidents and they start attacking other points. Points of his life. That's when it's just like, yeah, that's yeah. It's not called for, and like you know, we we talked we talked about this with Normie when, when it's away from actually what happened on the footy field and, and what they're doing on the footy field, and it starts to be about other shit, mm. then that's when it's not called for. So if we see anything like that, like I'll be I'll be happy to highlight that and fucking pull people up just like I did uh, when it happened to Normie. Still love the trail. Still love Joey. <laughs> Let's move on. I think yeah, just, we I think we all agree. Yeah, Aggressive but reckless. Accident. Reckless. Yeah, roll on. Um, I will start with you here. Obviously, you guys touched on off the top, but overall, the big sides looked pretty flat as a collective, which was a bit weird. Weird week of footy. Um, but are you still as confident that the grand final winner is going to come out of these top four? Or yeah. do you think Do you think those four sides below them in the top eight are a red-hot chance now? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking the questions, man. It's top three now. It's so. round fucking 24. Nobody cares about round 24. So. There's only three teams now. Yeah. Now, that, now that the trail's out, there's three. Um, yeah. I, that's it. That's... Who, who gives a fuck about round 24? I think finals. Like, well, let's roll through this. Hopefully we get everyone healthy. Like, sort of Scope said, we're off to the big superstars into our final series. We need all our – we need these guys in final series because it's a superstar league right now and these guys really, really matter. Just so, so you know, outside of, the t- outside of that top eight, it's Para, Roosters, Newey, and Cronulla at the moment, which could be Canberra depending on how that plays out. I've loved how Cronulla's been playing. Like, I know we're not – what do you got? What for, do next you year, for next year. You got like them? Yeah, for next year. I think they're, they're building nicely. And, Is uh, this your Titans special again? <laughs> Westgate was wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, There's only I, a few. I'm going to do it. Um, three of my best this week is going to be Westgate was wrong this year. Sydney Roosters, gonna, Sydney Roosters are going to get a shout out for what they've done this year. I'll give you, give you a heads up. Titans, clearly wrong there, and I'll come up with one more. Three of the best. Mm. 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I still, th- like, like Scope said, it's a three-horse race at the moment. Um, I think Panthers are the really interesting one. I think they're timing themselves well. I just don't know if they've got any emotional baggage from last year, from, from the GF. If they roll into that final again, are they happy to run it back or are they going, fuck, if we're down 10-0 early on, deja vu, fucking demons. Yeah. Scope? Yeah. Top, when it comes out of those top four, you still believe? Yeah, just three. I'm the same. Like yeah. I, I said it. Now that we've t- we talk so much about fucking how important superstars. I reckon they're a twelve point swing, superstars in the game these days. So we'll try there, try four, try against, and in finals, you can't give away twelve points. So you can't have your best players missing at the crucial point of time. And and you even look back at last year when uh, the Rabbitohs beat, uh, sorry, the Panthers beat Rabbitohs to go in the grand final. I'm thinking in that game, that game was fucking close. If Latrell's there, maybe it's a different result, and it wasn't. So, um, does this, Penrith have got better does, this year. So, does this season remind you of any other? Se- I don't feel like I can't really attach the season to any other season. You know, you know, you, you know what's harder? Why? Because the top four teams are that much better mm-hmm. than just say, like the bottom teams are so much worse than in previous years as well. And it's obviously because the rule changes have played a part, but you know, talent plays a part as well. Like. There's just been, you know, the old. It, it almost the old feels a bit like the Premier League, like watching the English Premier League, where you know, like Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea, Man City are going to be the teams, and that's what it's felt like for this year, I suppose, for about halfway through. Footy's always Crystal been Crystal like, Palace. <laughs> <laughs> footy's always been like, oh, any team on their day can beat them, but that's kind of not no, been it this year, no. eh? excluding yeah, this week. Even though, just say, just say, in past years, you've gone, like I don't think the fucking uh, Sharks can win the comp. Like with two or three weeks ago, they're going to finish sixth or seventh, right? You're like, I don't think they win the comp, but you think, yeah, they can fucking knock Melbourne off on on their odd day. You know what I mean? Mm. Apart from p- players being rested, you just don't really see that from the middle te- mid- middle tier teams. Um, Even put up a fight for sixty eight eh, back yeah, in the day it was like, yeah. a, fuck, we done all right here. Yeah, <laughs> fucking know. Cunts are just getting smacked now. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, rolling into ice, we'll start with you here. Uh, bunker blunders, obviously the big topic coming out of the weekend as well. Uncle Henry, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Henry Piranara is on thin ice at the moment. Uh, does the NRL need to revisit kind of their use of the bunker and take decisions out of their hands, or are you happy with the way things are at the moment? I don't mind it. I just think the personnel is wrong, man. Like you look at football players and they've got confidence. You can tell when they've got confidence. I think the same thing happens with refs, and and like you can have all the technology in the world, bro, if you don't back yourself. Man, you're going to make some dumb decisions, and he's making them right now. Mm-hmm. And when you, when you get the big dogs start coming after you via press, press conferences, um, knowing that you're going to cop a fine, man, he, he got stood down after the back of that as well. Too, Did eh? he? Has he been stood down? He got stood down on Saturday. So that happened on the Friday, was yeah. it? Friday, then he wasn't allowed to be in the bunker on Saturday. So, um, But I think there must be a flaw in the system, because I reckon he just goes, there must be a checklist, and then whenever you see something, he just goes, tick, 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 tick. Like, you just need someone in there with a bit of football knowledge and common sense. Like oh, football hasn't changed yeah. over the course. Of, I know the rules and shit change. Am I wrong? But he uncle played the game, eh? Yeah, yeah. 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 I think yeah. he played hundred no, of the best. Yeah, yeah. he so played I, the dragon. In terms of Barra. base footy knowledge, you'd assume it's there. Well, that's what I know, Hens. So this is a bit hard too because I've known Hens from back in the day. So, um, Ice is right. Like because I know Hens, and I, and I, like I sometimes I see him. Um, you know, when he used to ref, and and in particular when he's in the bunker and you hear his voice, you can. And like I could hear a bit of like nervousness in his voice <laughs> in some of the calls, and um, yeah, there's uh, look they've obviously got he, he made the wrong decision. Like as much as I stuck up for Latrell, the player, what Latrell did was deserved to be sent off, mm. and it essentially ruined any chance. Of, yeah, they end up blowing away. They even scored tries while Latrell was off. So who knows if it did affect the the result? But Latrell should have been sent off. Everyone is, is aware of that. I think the the Graham Annesley now is in charge of the ref, referees. I think he's come out and said that, that you know Henry got it wrong and he'll be uh, stood down. But yeah, old uncle, I don't think he'll be um, a part of the final <laughs> series. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously you don't want to see like, no one lose their no, job But no, then you're no. also like people, He's a good dude man too I like him like, oh, like a People way. need to be held accountable for yeah, actions of their job If you are yeah. going to get paid to do something You need to do it So yeah, um, yeah man yeah. I, don't, I don't think we're getting rid of the bunker like you see No you've got to keep the bunker The bunker more than, more than most times get it right But it's when they get it wrong that we highlight it That key cow try yesterday looked like a try mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean If you don't have the bunker there to call that shit up mm-hmm. Like he would have just walked off and just dropping the ball yeah, from I, there. I love that side of it too. Like with the bunker this year where they go, 
try. Try and then they go back and they go, oh, wait, wait a minute, we need to look at that because you don't need all that fucking carry on before. Um, that's, a, that's a good part of the rule. And like I said, 90 to 95% of the time they get it right, but when it's wrong... It's everyone can see, you know what I mean. So, and it's an easy talking point as well. Yeah, you know what I mean. They'll say, "Oh, this is why we lost." Yeah. Nah, probably not. But there was others like seventy nine other minutes where things were happening as well. Yeah. So, I think we can sort of hyper focus on on things when they go wrong. Yeah, especially um, when it's as blatant as that. Especially like when you're a coach and some, you can point to someone else. You're like, mm. No, nah, that wasn't on us. That that loss. That was on fucking the bunker because they f- fucked up that one call. And <laughs> and Trent Robertson's one of the smartest coaches in the competition. We talk about that all the time. He has to feel really strongly about someone <laughs> to go after by him. Name. By name. Because he could have easily just said the bunker, the yeah, bunker, the no, bunker. He made a point. He made a point to, to go after Henry. And What's the fine? Has he been fined yet? It'll be 50k. Kitties. I think that's pretty standard. Yeah. Kitties for necking the boys. <laughs> that's fucking Gil- Mark Brewis and fucking Nick will go grab that out of the car. Just in the, in the middle <laughs> console. Find the old couch cushions. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I love the bunker. I just, the one change I would, I don't like them constantly interfering with the putting blokes on report and you get nine guys on report. I think that's why you have a match review committee. Yeah, just so do it after just, the game. Yeah, do, it do it after, after the, the game, mate. Eh? I don't yeah. need to hear, I don't need to stop it after every try saying, oh, Radley, you're on report for something five minutes ago. Yeah, that's a good point. But I like, yeah, I, I thought about that the other day as well. Yeah. Is that your second best take of the year? I've got a couple. <laughs> um, this is, speaking of shit takes though, uh, potential rule change, obviously a lot of people, I saw Joey and Gus Gould probably stop. coming out with this. I will start with you here as a former half, mate. Potential rule, well, it's going to be trialled this week. Dogs, Tigers, I believe. Uh, kick out at any point, excluding 40-20 results in a seven-tackle set. Your thoughts on that? Bro, just stop changing the rules, man. Fuck, there's too many rules. Can we just not give this any time and not talk about it and finish the show now? <laughs> Thanks for joining the YKTR it's, Sports Show. It's, it's a stupid top. Like, for me, it's silly. Why do they keep doing it, though? <laughs> I think it's just, a, again, it's another adage to try speed up the game. How fast does it need to be? Like... <laughs> You see Christian Welsh come out and fucking... I love Christian Welsh. He, yeah, he's the, the, the voice of the player. He's yeah. there respectfully as well. He's the breed that these rules are sort of... <laughs> pushed into the side. <laughs> yeah, you're right. The white rhino, yeah. the last of his kind. But that's what he said too. He goes, yeah, you fucking halves go and kick the footy out and then go run back and defend on the wing while we got to fucking make all their tackles and shit. So he's having a little stab at months and fucking red rhine <laughs> Rome too. I like that. And, and then he even ripped into fucking Josh Adokar and, and the wingers as well. So that was a giggle. I think, I think when you have so many shows that are negative, say the Fox Sports stuff as well, where like Controversy Corner, um, NRL 360, when you complain about a product so much, you think there's something actually wrong with it. Yeah. That's the, like, there's, like why change? Has the Big Mac ever changed? Hmm. But No, but the marketing Trading has. myself to a Big Mac on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but the marketing has. You just changed the marketing. So when you get all these willy-nilly cunts fucking complaining all the time, you actually think there's a problem. There's not. I'd love to just see at least a 12 to 24 months consolidation. Let's lock in on the game, make it as best as it can be, and then if you want to make any changes there, after so make are, a bit are, of fan experience. Are they, trial, are they trialling on the weekend in the Dogs Tigers game, are they? Disrespectful, yeah. Of all the games to trial it on. They used to put that in the 20s. Twi- they used to test rules in the 20s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what they've done now. So basically, these, these guys are the new 20s. Yeah. Slack. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you Thank as you. always. Like, comment, and subscribe.